Hey everybody. So, lately online I've been seeing a debate between two camps. The uh, Monsters of the Week camp and the series long story camp for TV shows. In case you don't know, Monster of the Week is a term for when a TV show at the end of the episode they defeat the bad guy and everybody goes back to square one so it stays the same every episode. This is seen in shows like Scooby-Doo, Bewitched, Murder, She Wrote, Phineas and Ferb. Anything we're watching season seven before season three won't matter because spoilers don't exist. On the other hand, series long shows are exactly that when the entire show or season of the show is dedicated to fighting one big bad. Dexter, Breaking Bad, Riverdale, The Sopranos? Well, great examples. Now, you might have noticed that the Monster of the Week shows were older and for kids and were mostly comedies and the series long ones are the newer and edgier ones. This is generally how they're split up but lighter comedic shows can also have a series long plot. Galavant does it great. However, I'm less interested in discussing which shows use which format as I am which format is the most effective. Do we get emotionally invested in a series long conflict? Do Monster of the Week shows get boring after a while? Yep. So then, what's the best course of action? Well, it depends on what sort of show you're looking at, but for my money, which I have none of, your best bet is going to be a combination. Let's take a look at one season of one show to see how this can be done super effectively. Let's look at NCIS season seven, because I really liked it in middle school, and it's a pretty good example. Background on season seven. Uh, towards the end of season six, Tony killed Ziva's boyfriend in self-defense, but it caused a lot of drama between NCIS and Mossad. Ziva decides to stay in Israel, working with Mossad with her father, and the rest of the team goes back to DC, and the last scene of season six is finding out that Ziva is kidnapped in Somalia. So, of course, season seven, episode one, the best of the entire show, is about the team rescuing Ziva. The next few episodes deal with Ziva's trauma, as well as some other cases. But by episode five of the season, we have a new status quo set up. Ziva is done with Mossad and is becoming an American citizen. We go on solving mysteries for a while before we see the series arc start to occur. Aside from our lawyer side character popping up every couple of episodes, it's just mysteries and hijinks for most of the season. And it's not until episode 22 of the season that we get a whiff of the rhinosis. And how are they as big bats? They're the worst. In a good way. Paloma can fuck you up because, you know, drug cartel. And Alejandro working for the Mexican government meant that the team couldn't bend the law as they would have normally in this kind of situation. Also, their motivation is super easy to understand. Drug Lord kills Gibbs' wife and kid. Gibbs kills Drug Lord. Drug Lord's kids try to kill Gibbs. It's pretty simple. Simple and compelling. And that's important. And once we have a conflict, boy, do we have a conflict. Everything and everyone that could be threatened is threatened. Even Gibbs' elderly dad. This concept also fits perfectly into the overarching narrative of the series. Director Vance is still pretty new, and he has been butting heads with Gibbs a lot. 
this dynamic plays a huge role in the suspense. Is he gonna turn Gibbs in? Should he? And these questions and these dynamics work because we know the characters. This is them in crisis mode. They're not usually like this. We've seen them bicker, get coffee, play Scrabble, get fashion advice from a prostitute. Long story. But the idea is, because we've seen them in more mundane situations, we've gotten to know and care about them. We relate to them because they're regular people. And another benefit is, crazy shit seems even crazier by comparison. It's easy to make fun of shows like Riverdale for going batshit and jumping the shark, but how could they not? When you have to have your characters constantly in crazy situations, constantly upping the ante, and you have no time to get to know or develop these characters, no one is going to take it seriously. Of course we won't. So what's the moral of the story? Don't create epic, series-long stories? No, but be careful. If you don't give the audience time to get to know the characters, we won't care. Okay, I love you, bye-bye.